In this presentation, we will put together a statement of stockholders' equity from a trial balance. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Trial balance is going to be a fairly simple trial balance here, but I think it's important to see that the trial balance is in balance so we can see all the accounts here and then pick out the important parts, the ones we want to find a home for, that being, of course, the blue section, the equity section. So our trial balance is in order. We've got assets, liabilities, equity, revenue, and expenses. Assets in green, liabilities in orange, equity in blue, and revenue and expenses, income statement accounts, in the dark blue. Uh, the debits are going to be non-bracketed, credited, I mean, credits will be bracketed, or debits positive and credits negative for Excel. Debits minus the credits equals zero. So the debits equal the credits. That's what this uh, green zero represents. Net income is revenue minus, exp minus expenses of revenue of 500,000 credits minus the debit of 75,000 expense. And so we have the 425 of revenue. Now we're going to have a fairly simplified statement of stockholders equity. Our main purpose here is just to show the difference between a full statement of stockholders equity and just the uh, statement of retained earnings. And remember that if we are to uh, see the, the change here from the statement of equity, most of the change will typically be here on the retained earnings side. Because if we compare the statement, um, the equity section from a corporation to that of a sole proprietor or partnership, remember that a sole proprietor or partnership breaks out each equity section by who owns it. And that's by individual owner. We'll name the owner and have a capital account. In a corporation, we don't have to name the owner because they're all the same. It's just a matter of shares. So the shares are all the same. And so what we want to break out then is not by who owns them, but by initial investment versus the retained earnings, how much has been earned over the initial investment, less how much has been given out in the form of dividends. So that's the breakout here. So this is the initial investment. This is all that uh, the, the revenue that's been generated over the life of the company, less what has been given out in terms of dividends. So uh, normally after the initial investment, there might not be any more stock sales. So therefore, we and that's the case we're going to show here. We're going to say, hey, there's, there's no more stock sales. So there's no this amount is basically static. It's the same from the beginning to the end unless there was an more and more sales of stock and this amount here is really where the activity happens which is similar to a sole proprietor or partnership where we close out net income to the capital account uh, for a sole proprietor or partnership we close it out to a corporation to retain earnings and then the dividends we're going to break out separately so that we can see them here and then close them out to retain earnings so if we set up our statement of retained earnings then we have to be a little bit more com if we set up the statement of stockholders equity we have to be a little bit more complicated to have these columns here rather than like a sole proprietor which would only have uh, everything that would be closed out to a capital account so if there's nothing happening here it may be enough for us to just break out retained earnings because that's where the difference is but that will only give us the activity here and in order to see uh, the activity and come out to the full statement of equity which is all this to come out to 1 million uh, 368 which is assets minus liabilities we will have to include the full statement of stockholders equity which we will do here so we're going to start off uh, so first you want to just know how to set up the table so you would at, the, at a minimum need the common stock uh, that we're going to record in terms of the par value the paid in capital which will reflect this amount the retained earnings which is this amount this is really where most of the activity will happen now if there was treasury stock that's that's there i'm not going to include treasury stock because again i'm going to try to keep it you would need you know treasury stock and paid in capital for treasury stock and then we're just going to sum everything up and get the total equity which will result in the total so you want to see a table something like this which will basically represent each of the components in this case just the investment component stockholders equity paid in capital in column format rather than kind of in row format and then the retained earnings in one column which is all of this this is just going to we're going to reflect the activity uh, in a column here 
So let's do this. We're going to say that the balance for the beginning of the year, well, I'm just going to say January 1st, it might represent the end of last year, 2000X1. And we're just going to pull over this information. Now, again, we're going to say that there was no, uh, there was no per, uh, other investments, no stock sales from the company, which could be the case. There's a lot of stock sales from people to people, but it could very well be the case that from a year or from a time period, from a month, there's no other stock sales from the company to issue new stock. And so then all we have to do then is say, well, this must be the beginning balance. There's no activity in that case. So this amount on the trial balance is the same from beginning to end. That is our beginning balance. We could check, to double check that, we would check the general ledger. So I'm just going to flip the sign. I want to make this a positive, negative, to, to flip the sign instead of equals of that number. And then I'll flip the sign. There's the 660,000. We found a home for that number. And then the paid in capital, again, same thing. Uh, if there was no issuance of stock through the time period, the paid in capital is going to be the remaining the same through the entire time period. It's static because we already, if we already sold the stock and we started the company, there's no new stock sales. The people who own the company own the company. They may trade with other people amongst themselves, but we're saying that there's no f stock sales uh, from the company to new investors. So I'm going to do the same thing, negative instead of equals, that 230, and enter. And we found a home for that. Now the thing that will change is retained earnings, and that'll be the similar component to a sole proprietor or a partnership, similar to the closing process. We have retained earnings here. This is our retained earnings, and that's really the beginning balance as of the beginning of the year. What we're gonna do to it is the change, which includes closing revenue out to it, and we broke the dividends out here separately. So note that if the dividends weren't not broken out, in a separate account as they they could be just taken right out of out of retained earnings we'd have to go to the gl and look at the beginning retained earnings and then see the activity so in here we're going to say this is the beginning retained earnings all of this 478 will be the ending retained earnings so i'm going to start here this is what the retained earnings as of january this is the most confusing component of the statement of equity because it doesn't really say usually the trial balance will say as of the year end and this isn't really a year-end number. That's a year-beginning number because we haven't closed all of this out to it. It's not a post-closing trial balance. So we're going to do the same thing. I'm just going to say this is negative of that retained earnings. That's our beginning number. We found a home for that now. So our beginning total equity at the beginning is the sum of all these. And this should match our statement of equity, uh, stockholders' equity ending balance from last year. So we'll sum this up equals the sum. And then we'll add this up and just add these columns up. So the 660, the 230, the 317 add up to <laughs> the 1,207,000. Now we're going to put in the activity. Now remember, th these two aren't going to change. We're just going to pull these down because there wasn't any other stocks uh, that were issued. What we're going to do is, is be dealing with the retained earnings. That's why this is the important column most of the time. And what's going to happen, we're going to have a plus net income just like we normally would for a partnership or or a sole proprietor closing out to the capital or partnership yeah closing out to the capital accounts now we're closing it out to retained earnings account so that's going to be this amount the 425 representing these two items here so I, again i want to flip the sign and make it a positive number so i'm going to say negative of that number and just by doing that, which this number would also be on, on the income statement, clearly, we're going to say we found a home for basically all of this, right? So we found a home for all, all of this now. The only thing we haven't found a home for then is going to be the dividends. Now, there, there's not anything here, so I'm just going to sum this up this way, just like we did here for our little table. So we're just going to equal the sum. And I'm going to sum all the cells even though they're empty. So we'll sum the whole thing. And there we have that. Now we're going to say that the dividends are kind of like draws. They're going to be taken out of what is owed to the owner. And we're going to take it out of the earnings. We're not going to take it out of the initial investment. So we're going to say less the um, draws or less the dividends, we should say. And that's going to be this number here. So we're going to say less dividends declared. That's going to be this number here. So I'm going to put that in the retained earnings in O. 12 
And I'm going to keep it as a positive number, even though it's going to be a subtraction problem, telling our reader it's a subtraction problem with words by saying less. So I'm just going to say equals that six, uh, 264. And now we found a home for that item. Now I'm going to go ahead and sum this up again. Equals the sum of the entire column, or row, <laughs> it's the sum of the row. So you got to be careful, it's just a table, right? So we're summing this way, and then at the end, we'll be able to sum up both ways, vertically and horizontally, and it should check out. Now just note that there's two, the, the two things that we're not having here is if there was an issuance of common stock, that would be the other thing that would happen basically to, to the common stock column if we issued more common stock. We're going to say there's no activity there, so we'll keep it zero. And then if there was any kind of repurchase of common stock, then those would be some activities that uh, could deal with something other than just normal transactions in terms of the closing process here. So I'll just note that. Uh, if we sum this up again, I'm just going to copy these down and just bring those zeros down. There's no activity, which means we don't need to put these two rows in there in that case, but just to note them. Then that'll give us the uh, retained earnings at the end of the day. So now we're looking at the balance. I'm just going to copy this. And I'm going to paste it here. And we'll just change the date to December 31st now. So we started off at the beginning of the year. Now we're going to have the ending of the year here. So we'll put our totals in here. And uh, note that these are going to be static because there wasn't any change over the time period. Uh, what we really care about is the statement of retained earnings. And it might be easiest for us to actually look at the statement of retained earnings first and do the calculation here and then apply the same kind of calculation to the rest of the activity. So in other words, uh, the statement of retained earnings, just like any kind of closing process, is going gonna, is gonna to have the beginning balance, which in this case was 317. It's going to go up by the um, net income, just as it would if it was a capital account for a sole proprietor or a, sole or a partnership. So we're going to increase that by 425,000. And then it's going to go down by what we gave to the, to the owners. If it was a partnership or sole proprietor, it would be called draws. In this case, it's dividends for a corporation minus the 264,000. So it's important to note that that's going to be a minus there. And then we're going to have the 478,000. So we'll do that with uh, formulas here now. So we're going to say this equals the retained earnings plus the net income minus the dividends declared. Now these two, just to have a uniformity with so we can copy and paste the formula, clearly uh, the issuance of stock, and I'm not sure it's better, so that looks better, the issuance of stock has nothing to do with uh, retained earnings, but we know for the total, for the total equity section, if we issued uh, stock, it's going to increase equity. And so that's going to be over here in the capital section if we were to do that. Uh, and the repurchase of stock, we know it has nothing to do with the retained earnings column, but it's going to uh, reduce total equity typically. So if we just put that in the formula, then we can copy and paste the full formula uh, to whatever cell is applicable. So I'm going to go ahead and, and add that and say plus this zero column minus this repurchase. And the reason I'm going to do that is because then I can just, I can copy and paste this formula. So if I say enter, then that has everything included. So if there was any activity in these columns, then I wouldn't have to retype the formula. I could just copy this formula and put it here and paste the formula. And it would do the same thing if there was any numbers. And I could put that even in the total, right click and paste. And that'll give me the total here. Uh, which, which will be, it's not going to be the sum, it's going to be this plus this minus this, which should match the entire uh, 1368. Now, that's why I'm going to do that, but I'm going to delete that and we're going to do the whole thing just one more time just so we can do it again and, and see each column. So the common stock, there's no difference, there's no change. But again, we could put the same formula in there to match, to have the uniformity, which would be, just be the... Uh, the 660 start, and then it would go up by net income. There's no net income because that goes to the retained earnings, but I could still just put the same formula in, 
minus the dividends. There's no dividends for the common stock because that's part of retained earnings, but we're going to match the formula all the way across plus the common stock uh, issuance. If we issued common stock, it would increase. And then if we uh, repurchased any common stock, that would be a decrease. And that would be the 660. We'll do the same thing for the paid in capital. Again, the paid in capital is the excess of the common stock that during the issuance, and there was no issuance. So I'm going to say this is the beginning balance plus net income. Again, net income shouldn't be affecting paid in capital. It never will. But we're just going to copy the uniformity of this for, for total equity. Total equity would be affected, and therefore we can just use the same formula here. And then minus the dividends uh, plus the issuance, if there were one, minus the repurchase and enter. And then the retained earnings, we can do the same for the total equity here. So I could say total equity equals the beginning balance plus the net income minus the dividends plus the issuance, if there were one, minus any repurchase, if there were one. Now, the nice thing is we should be able to double check this this way as, re as well. These totals should also tie out. So it does 1368. Uh, That's kind of how the Excel table should work. We should be able to check it this way and then check it this way. And we may even want to do a little sum function underneath to give ourselves that double check. Now, uh, so note that the statement of retained earnings is where all the activity happened. But the total here, which also shows all the activity, will include the common stock and paid in capital. So if we just see the statement of retained earnings and we know there was no activity in these two accounts, then that gives us what we need because this statement is telling us what the change is. And if there's no change here, then uh, we, you know we don't need to see that that activity. It's, it's going to be the same as the prior. So what we're really looking for is is this activity. But in order to see the book value, the assets minus the liabilities of 1,368,000, or to see the entire equity section, which of course will also be 1,368,000. We, we need to include the entire thing and therefore include uh, the common and paid in capital having the entire. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Entire statement of stockholders' equity.